hello guys welcome back to my channel so if you haven't subscribed my channel please go and click the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you can get notification about new console videos so in today's video i'll show you that how you can solve a beam splitter simulation using console multiphysics so here is the problem statement so we are going to solve a 2d beam splitter so you can see here this is the one prism and this one is the second prism and these two prisms are combined to each other with a 15 nanometer silver transition layer so what we are going to do we are going to apply an incident gaussian beam from the left side and we are going to see that how much of the beam is split into transmitted and reflected beam so i'll show you all the steps in the console so let's go to the console so now we have opened the console software so the first step is to define the space dimension so we are going to solve a 2D problem. So I will click on the add component and then I will select 2D. So you can see here uh, the 2D space dimension has been added into our model builder. The next step is to assign the parameters. So I'm going to define global parameters here. So you have two options. You can write the name of the parameter, then expression, and then description of your parameter and the value will be calculated automatically. So in this case, uh, I have already defined parameters in a text format. So I'm going to import those parameters into parameter. So I'll click here the load from file. Then I'll click on the parameters for the beam splitter. And you can see here the parameters are successfully uh, imported into console. So this the first one is the first one is uh, vacuum wavelength. The second one is the material wavelength. F zero is the frequency and we have the relative dielectric constant for the silver material and then we have the spot radius for the Gaussian beam after defining the parameters the first step is to define the geometry in this case i'm going to select the length unit from meter to micrometer and then i will right click on the geometry it'll go to the polygon and then i will assign the values minus 10 and minus 10 for the first point the second point will be x minus 10 and y 10 and the third point will be 10 and 10 microns and remember uh, you should select the type solid it shouldn't be closed or open so select solid and then click the build selected you can see here the half of the prism is being generated so next step is to generate the same polygon on the other side so i will click on the geometry i'll go to the transform then select the rotate function i'll select this object click on keep input objects and write the angle minus 180 and then click build select all objects so you can see here we successfully created two prisms and with the transition boundary so now our model is complete so we'll go to the geometry click on build all so we are good to go with the geometry the the first step is completed the next step is to assign the material for assigning the material we are considering this uh, beam splitter as a quartz glass material so right click on the material go to add material from library click here for the search and write quartz and click on the search button it will show us all the quartz material and then we can select glass quartz from the built-in materials double click on glass quartz you can see here the material has been added and then go here and close the add material section now you can see here we have successfully added the material the next step is to define the physics so to define the physics go to the physics tab and then click on add physics and go to optics and then wave optics select the electromagnetic waves frequency domain double click on this physics and you can see here the physics is added in the model builder just close the add physics tab in the electromagnetic wave frequency domain physics the first step is to select the all domains so domain number one and two and then uh, for the electric field component solved for click and select the out of plane vector and we are solving the problem for full field go to wave equation electric and you can see here uh, both domains are selected click on the electric displacement field and you can see here for the electric displacement field model we have different models 
we are going to select refractive index model and the refractive index real part and imaginary part these values will be taken from the assigned material in this case the glass quartz so you don't need to do for the next two steps so we are going to select the boundary conditions the boundary condition for this problem is basically we are going to provide a beam gaussian beam from the left side and for that purpose we will right click on the electromagnetic wave and then go to the scattering boundary condition scattering boundary condition is used for the transparent boundary so in this case we are considering this one as a transparent boundary and we want to apply our incident field yes so we have different options here so in this case we are going to select gaussian beam so it is asking for the beam radius you can see here we already defined the beam radius uh, as w0 so we'll come back here and we'll write w0 and distance to focal plane we don't need this one so we will keep it zero and for the electric field amplitude we are going to apply one volt per meter so you don't need to do anything here as well so we have successfully defined this boundary as the incident beam boundary from where the Gaussian beam will come and go inside the beam separator. So the next boundary condition we are going to select is again scattering boundary condition. In this case, we are going to select these three boundaries and will not assign any field here and we will keep it here. So this scattering boundary condition number two is for these three sides and we are considering these three sides as a transparent boundary and the next one and then go and click on the transition boundary condition for the transition boundary condition we are going to select this boundary as a transition boundary and you can see here we have different electric displacement field model in this case previously we selected reflective index but in this case we will select the relative permittivity and for the relative permittivity uh, we will assign the value user defined so if you go here we have this relative dielectric constant which is equal to the relative permittivity of the material. So we'll go to the transition boundary condition and we will paste the value here. The next step is to relative permeability. Click the user defined and keep it one. For the electric conductivity, click the user defined and remain it zero. And for the electrically thick layer, so we are going to define the thickness as 15 nanometer. So now our problem is fully defined. The next step is to generate the mesh. So to keep the problem simple, I will select the physics controlled mesh and click the build all. So now you can see here the mesh has been successfully generated. If you zoom, you can see here the beam splitter body has been discretized into multiple components. So after the mesh, uh, we need to select appropriate study. To, to select the appropriate study, go to the study tab and click on add study and select the frequency domain study. You can see here the frequency domain study has been added and then close the add study. Go to frequency domain study and select the frequency. So we have defined the frequency F0 in the parameters, the global parameters. You can see here the F0 is the speed of light divided by the vacuum wavelength we have provided. So for this frequency, we are going to solve the problem. So if you come back here for the study step, frequency domain, we have provided the frequency value F0. And simply click on compute. And it will take a few minutes to compute the simulation. From progress tab, you can monitor the progress of the simulation. Now it's 33 points are computed and you can see here uh, the computation progress is going so fast because it's a very simple 2D problem. So you can see here we have successfully solved the beam splitter problem. So where we have provided a Gaussian beam from the left end of the beam splitter. It goes and strikes with the transition layer and some of the beam is transmitted and some of the beam is reflected. So this is basically electric field normal surface plot. And if you want to see that how much power we have provided for the incident Gaussian beam and how much power is distributed for the transmitted and reflected beam. So come to the results and then right click on the result, go to 1D plot. And I'm going to write it as power 
distribution right click on the power distribution and click on the line graph and select this boundary and from the replacement expression i will click and go to the electromagnetic waves frequency domain we'll go to the energy and power and we'll select the power outflow so in this case we want to see the inflow power and this is the formula for the outflow power so we will go and use minus sign for the inflow power for the units i will convert it to milliwatt per meter square and for the axis click on expression and write y and click on the plot so you can see here uh, at the boundary from minus 10 to 10 microns if i go here you can see this is the boundary from minus 10 microns to 10 microns and we expect the maximum beam power at zero so if you see the plot you can see here at from minus 10 to 10 microns the maximum power is being applied at the zero location and this is 2 milliwatt per meter square and this is the incident power now we would like to see that how much power is distributed at the transmitted end and the reflected end so for that again i will click on the line graph i will duplicate this one but this time i would like to see the power distribution on this end and instead of inflow power i will keep it outflow and for the expression i will change from y to x and then again click you can see here this much power is available at the reflected end of the beam splitter and again if you want to see how much the power of the transmitted beam so right click on the line graph 2 and duplicate but for this time we are going to select this boundary and we will remove this boundary and we will keep it y and then click and you can see here this red one is showing us the transmitted beam power green one is the reflected beam power and this is the original beam power and if you want to see that how much power is lost due to the transition boundary so again i will click on the line graph 3 go to the duplicate and this time i will click replace expression go to the electromagnetic waves and go to the heat and losses and click on the surface resistive losses and for that purpose this time we will select the boundary transition boundary and it doesn't matter if you select x or y just click the plot and you can see here the light blue line represents the surface resistive losses due to the transition boundary so that's all about today's simulation thank you so much for watching